the Dittrich Medical History Center is um, a museum that it has an archives and a museum that's dealt traditionally with uh, medical instruments, the history of medical technology, that kind of thing. Very small uh, museum that's associated with Case Western Reserve University School of Arts and Sciences. And where we are now is uh, an exhibit, it's going to be an exhibit, a collection of 700 or so uh, con different contraceptive methods that have been used across time. And uh, a, a, one fellow collected this whole group of things, of objects. His name is Percy Skye, S-K-U-Y. He started collecting um, contraceptives not ever knowing what he would find, had no clue that he would eventually collect 700 items and that he would find everything from beaver testicles to uh, wood box pessaries and, and everything else. People have looked at the process of, of having sex, getting pregnant, the woman bears the child, um, and then tried to circumvent that process in some way so that the woman would not get pregnant. And people tried to do this even before they actually knew how a child was conceived um, or how the ovaries worked or how, how the, the male uh, sperm cells were manufactured. I think that, that scholars have proven that possibly the Egyptian papyrus in 1550 BC um, is one of the earliest mentions in print of birth control. Um, of course, it's not called birth control in that way, but uh, of preventing conception. One way is to block the access of the, uh, from the sperm to the cervix. Cap is harder and smaller. The diaphragm is flexible, so the cap fits directly over the cervix, and it works with a sort of a vacuum. You know, you can almost hear it when you put like that. There's a vacuum. And so it only has to prevent the sperm from going into the cervix, whereas the diaphragm covers the whole outside of the cervix using the vaginal wall. It sticks to the vaginal wall like that. So you insert the diaphragm into the vagina like this. Sometimes there were inserters that were used, and I'm not at all sure exactly how you would do that, but it looks very awkward, Ooh. painful, and whatever. Wow. And, and then you have hormonal methods, which are the latest variety. But the interesting thing is that almost all of those ways have been tried at, other, at some points in time, even before we knew about hormones. Um, people in Mexico were using yams and realized that yams have estrogen, and estrogen might prevent pregnancy. And so somehow those, those were used, whether it was in a suppository or in some other way. Back in ancient times, when people did not know how conception occurred, there was a strong belief in magic. And so you, you mixed things together and you, you hung it around your neck, cat bones or, or dung or uh, whatever, and you hung those around your neck. And that was supposed to ward off whatever, the gods of pregnancy, I don't know. Dung. Yep. Dung. Yes. I mean, ooh. Yeah. I, I just, That's creepy. I don't get it. It is creepy. People tried to prevent conception as early as thousands of years ago. Um, and that didn't stop uh, when people came to the New World and when, you know, Americans were getting settled and whatever. Um, so the, the knowledge was passed on from woman to woman, mother to daughter, or sister to sister. Of you can use these preparations, they might work. You could try this, they might work. But there were times, as the Comstock Law from 1873 to probably 1930s or 40s, when this knowledge was suppressed. So even mothers didn't even know enough to pass it down to their daughters. I mean, my grandmother, when she was married, she had left home at 16, 17, and she married apparently the first guy who came around and looked like he might be interested, she thought you had to sit on the toilet. That's what she thought birth control was. After sex, she just went and sat on the toilet. She had three babies within, you know, a couple years. The actual legal situation of birth control didn't change until 1971 when the words for the prevention of conception were removed from the Comstock Law. The Comstock Law is still the country's obscenity law still prevents the, the import of obscene devices, 
um, but it, it no longer prevents uh, anything that has to do with, con with contraception. In the 70s, birth control becomes this real issue for feminists and in the feminist movement, but then we start going backwards um, with the 80s in the Reagan um, administration and uh, later Republican administrations. Instead of making it a woman's decision to decide whether or not she can carry a child to term and to decide whether or not she's able or the society is able to support this child in the way that she as a mother wants the child to be supported. The issues have always been there and most likely women have always tried whatever they could 